Well, it's that time of year again. It's the West Somerset Railway Autumn Gala. And I made a couple of visits over the two days, which I mentioned there in the header. And I'm down at Williton Station. And coming towards me on the up line is a goods train. A demonstration train, obviously, not a revenue earning train. Drawn by Standard Class 4, 80072. We didn't see many of these in my train spotting days in the 50s and the 60s. They were consigned to, I think, mainly the eastern side of the southern region. But here she comes making a fine sight. She disappears with her train in the direction of Stagumber and the station staff set about reopening the road. A short while to wait and a cup of tea on a chilly morning before the arrival of a double-headed passenger train drawn by two manors, 7820 Dinmore Manor and 7822 Foxcote Manor. Manors too were a rare breed in our neck of the woods. They, I think, were much more prevalent in West Wales. We saw one or two on the line going from London to South Wales. West Somerset Railway Fine Dining on the Quantock Bell set.
Those of you who've watched these little films before will know that uh, Williton Station is an interchange station where the up and the down trains pass one another. So the train coming now on the up line is another passenger train, this time drawn by an XLMS engine, class 2, 41312. This engine too, according to my records, was shedded on the southern region, in the east side of the southern region. We had one or two of this little group of engines in and around Bristol, but uh, this little group was primarily further east.
something I don't recall seeing very frequently at this exchange point is both trains leaving at the same time, which adds to the realism of the spectacle. With the departure of the up train, I decided to move quickly down the line to Dunster Station, which to me epitomises a great western country station. And it's beautifully maintained and suits the railway very, very well. The original goods shed is still in situ at uh, Dunster and the uh, permanent way department make good use of it and the yard adjacent to it. Anyway, here comes our double-headed train pulled by the two manors that we saw at Williton. And we can see them at pretty close proximity from the end of the Dunster station platform. By the time I arrived at Minehead Station, Dinmore Manor 7820, the first of the double-headed engines, was just pulling onto the turntable. And this was repeated by 7822, Foxcote Manor. Quite a spectator sport, this.
by the end of my couple of days on the line covered by this film I have seen and we shall therefore see most of the engines turned on the turntable we saw the S&D Loco 53808 saw Braunton in its alternative guise and we saw Camelot the class 5 standard Loco so uh, very interesting procedure The turntable has to be locked in position at both ends before the locomotive can move away from the turntable and because of the balance, the fine balance I suppose of the turntable, the engine occasionally had to move backwards or forwards to make that locking process possible and that occurs several times in the various turning procedures that we shall watch. Foxcoat Manor now moves forward and then reverses through the points which are controlled by a ground frame onto the line which then allows it to run forward onto the turntable and the communication between the locomotive crew and the signalman is quite clear to see from a satellite telephone communication box there. That too is interesting and safety is paramount.
Foxcoat Manor finally leaves the turntable and gives us the chance to nip across the central platform to see what's in the yard and the first loco we see is the USA Loco S160 class loco which failed just prior to the gala it's been a rather unsuccessful our experience for this loco this time and she wasn't used during the gala but there she is looking very smart and purposeful Meanwhile, Foxcoat Manor takes on water to a musical accompaniment provided by a local male voice choir. Very, very interesting and very pleasant. Time was pressing, so I moved back to the other side of Williton to one of my favourite locations, just in time to catch a down train hauled again by the LMS Class 2 engine 41312. Here she comes. And finally, to Bishop's Lydiard Station, where we shall finish our day's visit with another freight train, this time hauled by 6960, Ravening on the Hall, the big GWR loco. And she made a very, very spirited departure from Bishop's Lydiard, as you will now see.
a bright sunny Saturday morning and my son and I are now at Williton where we see the first train of the day hauled on the up line by our little class 2 loco 41312 there's already a train on the down line which we didn't see arrive of course and that's hauled I think probably by the two manners again but uh, here we are 41312 gets smoothly away and disappears in the direction ultimately of Bishop Lydiard. And the two smoke plumes to my left confirm that I was correct. This is another double-headed train heading in the direction of Minehead with the dining cars in tow. So we'll have a, another early morning cup of tea and wait for the arrival of the next down train. This proves also to be a double header made up of the ex Somerset and Dorset Class 7F 53808 and a new locomotive for this line at least, the standard Class 5 73082 which is named Camelot. It wasn't named in BRS days as far as I'm aware. Probably named in preservation. But it was a super loco. And as I said, it's not been or not visited the West Somerset previously. So my son and I did the right and proper thing, bought a ticket and set off from Minehead and this was an opportunity for me to film the line from Williton to Minehead which I don't think I've ever done previously and it was most interesting, relaxing and seeing things from a different angle. Away we go.
We are now approaching the station at Watch It, which is our first opportunity to see the sea, or at least the Bristol Channel. And there's quite a posh marina now at Watch It. The harbour has been modified slightly to provide marina facilities. The next station at which we shall call will be Washford, which is another favourite filming point for me. And again, I can see it from a different perspective. We can see the two locomotives to good effect around this curve, which is presumably why there's a group of photographers there, an organised group by the look of it, at the left-hand side of the track. They may, of course, have been walkers just waiting to cross the line. Who knows? And this is the Washford approach. Washford Station and the associated yard is the base for the Somerset and Dorset Railway Trust on the line, where they have their museum facility and some uh, freight rolling stock. After leaving Washford and passing through a cutting, we should be travelling down the hill with the sea becoming increasingly apparent as we approach Blue Anchor. Here we are then at uh, Blue Anchor, which is another of the potential passing places on the line, which is being used this morning 
and in a moment or two we shall see the arrival of 8072, the standard Class 4 loco with its train. One of the late substitutions to the uh, lineup of locomotives for this gala. the splendid sweep of Blue Anchor Bay and the approach to Dunster with Dunster Castle in the woods on the left and the headland there overlooking Minehead of course. Here's our first view of Dunster Castle up in the woods and then the road crossing as we approach Dunster Station.
now quite a long straight run into mine head with the uh, sewage processing works on the left and Butlin's on the right and mine head and its headland ahead of us quite a lot of stock pretty dead stock is stored alongside the line here as you can see audible warning signal the road crossing ahead or I suppose to be fair they signal the rail crossing to the road traffic and then the yard is on the right with the water tower and the locomotive stabling and we shall pull in to the left side of the main central platform Foxcote Manor is there underneath the water tower but we won't dwell on the yard for a moment we'll go forward and have a look at our engines that have drawn us down from Williton and there we see the standard 73082 Camelot 53808 is already pulled off the train and is reversing because she too will be on the turntable shortly. And there's the rather underutilised USA engine class S160 which we looked at yesterday looking very smart against the shed but not really earning her keep. 53808 now runs forward onto the turntable and she will be followed by Camelot 73082 using the same procedure that we witnessed yesterday so I won't describe every move just enjoy it
Well, that completes the most interesting turntable activity and allows us to nip back across the central platform and look at the yard again, looking again at the USA loco. I must say it's a magnificent beast. Just a great pity we didn't see it move along the line and there too is the 7F just approaching the water tower albeit on the wrong side to actually take any water whereas Camelot in all her glory is positioned absolutely correctly to do exactly the same and she will take our train back to Williton. But before that we witnessed the arrival of Bronson which has been rebranded for the season as Lord Dowding in recognition of the RAF centenary which is being celebrated this year. So she is 34052 for the moment at least. And very smart too. She too will be detached from her train and uh, turned on the turntable so we shall have the chance to witness 
one of the largest engines which the turntable can accommodate. When Tornado was here, the tender had to be detached and turned separately, but uh, Lord Dowding is able to turn on his own, so to speak. Looking at our train in the distance, alongside the locomotive as she approaches, the last coach on that train is the Hawksworth Engineers Saloon, which was obviously used by the executive in GWR days. And my son and I travelled back together with 20 or 30 other ones in that saloon back to Williton. The turning procedure for a locomotive of this size demands that the turntable is dealt with in a very precise fashion, but the procedure is identical.
Witnessing the turning of Lord Dowding to nip back across and take a final look at the locomotive yard and there we see the locomotive which is going to take us back to Willardson, Camelot as I said earlier and there's Lord Dowding under the water tower alongside and rather dwarfing the 7F, the Somerset and Dorset locomotive. magnificent weather has heightened the uh, beauty of these great beasts. They remind one of very large African elephants. I don't know. There we go. Perhaps it's taken me back to my teenage years and seeing these was commonplace but nevertheless exciting. During the course of this little film, my two-day visit, I was able to record all the locomotives which made up the fleet that was on display. And our loco pulls forward 
to rejoin our train and bring our little film to a conclusion for another year. Many thanks to the West Somerset Railway and the people who give their time so willingly to keep it functioning in an efficient fashion. Well done. <laughs>